Thank you, Speaker. Uh, as a member of parliament, I have to admit that I, uh, I don't often get a huge amount of time to sit down and enjoy TV programs, but one that I did enjoy watching last year was Old People's Home for Four-Year-Olds. In an age where we have a lot of cooking and home renovation and matchmaking programs dominating the reality TV market, it was really refreshing to see a program that was thought-provoking and also showed the way that people from different generations can have a really profound impact on each other. Now, the Australian version of that TV show, which aired on the ABC, was based on a British show of the same name, and it followed 11 retirement home residents, along with 10 preschool-aged children who spent time with each other, playing games and participating in different planned and mixed activities. It was really a delightful program to watch, and the reason, although it may seem a slightly odd thing to be speaking about, the reason I am bringing it up today is that I'm very proud to speak today in this place about how similar initiatives are being rolled out in the Dubbo electorate. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was at Wellington and got the chance to have a tour of the brand new Maranatha Gunya intergenerational learning space. Now, for a variety of reasons, the town of Wellington sadly does have a bit of a stigma associated with it, but I'm very proud to represent the town and the Maranatha Gunya project is just one of the many great things happening in the community. And this will be the first of its kind in Australia. The centre will incorporate not only childcare, but also before and after school care, there'll be emergency care, and very importantly, the integration of the existing aged care facility right next door. It's taking the old people's home for four-year-olds concept and turning it from reality television into absolute reality. Maranatha Gunya will be using the early years learning framework to create a range of short and long-term goals for children. Time spent between the generations will be optional and those who have been involved in its development have suggested things like singing and reading, craft, music, gardening and a host of other activities could be included in a specially designed program. Activities will be planned that will be based on the abilities of both generations while at the same time providing valid outcomes to both parties. Various rooms have already been set up with custom furnishings uh, and being able to spend time in those areas certainly brought the simple reality of how it can actually work uh, to life for me in a, in a really good way. It's very comfortable, it will certainly work for both age groups. There's also a yarning circle as part of this, literacy and numeracy stations and a pretty amazing outdoor play, recreation and meeting area. Construction of this amazing place began in September last year and it is just about complete. It's been jointly funded by Maranatha House Aged Care itself, along with the federal government through the Building Better Regions program, and Wellington Building Company, Matt Redfern Constructions, received the contract to uh, build the premises, which is really good. Matt's also used a, a large number of local subcontractors, which kept the work and the economic stimulus in town, which we love to see. Dubbo architect Kirk Leeson from local firm Barnson designed the centre and I was pretty gobsmacked, I've got to say, when I visited. Until you actually go there, lay your eyes upon it outside and then inside, you don't necessarily get a real understanding of just how innovative and modern this facility is. As I mentioned, uh, this centre will be the first of its kind in Australia. I'm sure, though, that once it's up and running, uh, there'll be plenty of other areas uh, interested and looking to get involved and, uh, and see the benefit of having intergenerational centres in their areas. It's not only the Maranatha Gunya Centre that's heading down the path of attempting to bridge that gap between our elderly residents and our future generations. There are other examples of preschools and daycare centres forming partnerships with aged care facilities that do result in that wonderful relationship building, the development of wonderful respect as well. Dubbo and District Preschool is one of those. It's uh, looking to branch into the area and earlier this year partnered with Kintyre Living to allow for students to visit some of the elderly residents. Uh, the children, most who will be entering kindergarten next year, got the chance to do an excursion. They sat with some of the residents of Kintyre. They talked, they read books, they did some colouring, other activities. The feedback was fantastic. The children loved having their new friends. Unfortunately, of course, that's had to be curtailed and changed a bit during COVID-19. Um, but really, for the residents of Kintyre, some of whom don't have grandchildren or great-grandchildren, it really did provide a, a difference to their lives. Uh, with some uh, great use of modern technology, there have been uh, sub subsequently, fairly recently, uh, more visits done using Skype and Zoom, that sort of way of staying in touch, which has been a fantastic way to keep that thing going. Lots of uh, examples of how some of these centres can interact together, uh, and I, I do really want to make sure we, uh, we recognise Maranatha Ganya. The committee, the chair, Terry Frost and his board, along with the childcare director, Dixie Robinson, her team, and I'd like to wish them all the very best for the opening of the brand new centre.